Hello, uh, my name is Kaylee Clary. I work with David Jensen in the Knowledge Discovery Laboratory at UMass, and today I'll be talking about our work on A-B testing with, in networks with adversarial members. So we're all probably familiar with A-B testing in the general setting. Uh, we have uh, some treatment that we'd like to uh, estimate the strength of effect uh, in, for, for some outcome of interest. So in this example, uh, we change the color of our banner to green, and we'd like to see if that increases the amount of time some visitors spend on our site. Uh, we divide the population of visitors into treatment and control. Uh, people in treatment see the green, uh, people in control see the white, and then we uh, determine the difference between those two uh, average type on sites. Uh, but what happens if your website is actually a social network? So uh, now our population is this network here. And if we follow the same procedure, we randomly assign uh, people in the network to uh, treatment, well, then we get this uh, and say, like, I really like this green banner, and I'm using it all the time. I'm talking to all my friends using this new app. Uh, well, then my, my friends are using the app more also because I'm talking to them. So we have this spillover effect from the random assignment through the network, uh, which we'd like to avoid because this is a violation of the stable unit treatment value assumption from the Rubin causal model. So instead, what we'll do is use an alternative framework, uh, graph cluster randomization. So in this setup, instead of randomly assigning treatment to everyone in the network, uh, we will first cluster the graph and then apply treatment at the cluster level. And this sort of insulates that spillover effect, prevents it from uh, infiltrating the entire graph. OK, uh, so here's my network. And uh, suppose this guy works for a competitor. And he sees this green screen and knows about experimentation in social network platforms and says, uh, you know, I think I can manipulate something here. Uh, I, don't, I, I think this is a great addition, but I think people are going to want to use it more. So I'll just stop using the app. Uh, that means his friends are not using it as often either. So this one motivated individual can affect the outcome of his friends uh, by making this observation about uh, that experiment. So uh, we're going to refer to that person as an adversary. Uh, and generally, these are participants in the experiment who would like to influence the estimate of interest. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, average treatment effect, but you can imagine using other estimates. Um, and so what, he, what these individuals would like to do is either uh, two things. You're either increasing or decreasing the estimate interest. Uh, this will introduce bias into the estimate. Uh, you could also consider an uh, individual who just wants to introduce random behavior to the estimate, and this will increase variance. Uh, we'll be focusing on the situation where you want to introduce bias. Um, so obviously, there, the competitor is, a, is an easy uh, version of, of this situation, but you can also imagine uh, alternative definitions for or motivations for adversaries. Uh, it could be a bot where cosmetic changes to your website aren't going to affect any of their behavior, uh, so that's non-compliance. I saw this one personally. Uh, right after Facebook rolled out the emoji reactions, someone commented on an article about how they may, might use that data and said, well, I don't want them to use my data, so I'm just going to respond with the opposite, uh, which is really not what Facebook wants. Um, but that's one way someone might preserve their privacy is by acting as an adversary. Um, so we're acknowledging that these other uh, behavior models might exist, but uh, in these uh, in this work, we're just going to assume that if there's more than one adversary in the network, then they all have the same behavioral model. OK, so we know how to deploy treatment across the network. Now we'd like to estimate the effect of that treatment. So we'll use the framework from GUI, their uh, group from LinkedIn, uh, from their triple dub paper in 2015. Uh, and basically, this just says that my outcome is a model, a linear additive function of treatment. Uh, that, so basically, uh, you're affected by your individual treatment status, the treatment, of, uh, treatment status of your friends, and the outcome of your friends. And given a treatment assignment vector and uh, the uh, outcomes from the network, you can estimate the treatment effect from data. Uh, we're looking again at uh, uh, ATE, which is just the difference between global control and global treatment across the network. And it's really important to note that uh, this is a linear additive function. This is um, what most of our analysis is built on. So there are a couple other things other than adversary behavior that you'd want to consider. One is adversary placement. So we looked at uh, two different paradigms, one where adversaries are dispersed randomly over the graph, 
and one where adversary placement is targeted. Um, we looked at up to a dominating set. So a dominating set is when, uh, for any member of the network, they, ha they share an edge with at least one adversary. Uh, something else you'd want to consider is uh, the relative influence of these adversaries on their neighbors. Uh, think about uh, two different nodes, one with two friends each, and, or sorry, two different nodes with 100 friends. Uh, one of those nodes has, uh, each of his 100 friends has two friends each, and the other person, each of their 100 friends has an additional 100 friends each. Uh, this first guy is going to have a much higher influence on his neighborhood because they all have low degree compared to this other person uh, where each of those degrees is much larger. So we're using the column sum of transition probabilities across the graph to represent that, that influence. Uh, this guy has influence of uh, 1.3 repeating uh, compared to this guy, which has 4.83 repeating. Uh, notice that the second one has more connections to uh, nodes with low degree. OK, so now we'd like to uh, derive some sort of uh, bound or uh, derive directly the bias in ATE induced by adversary behavior. Um, and adversaries bias ATE in two different ways. The first is through the value of their outcome, which is the same as it would have been in the propositional case, the non-relational case. And the second is through uh, their out the effect of their outcome on their neighbor's outcome. But this is tricky because we're still trying to estimate the true, net tr true network effect and uh, the strength of that effect depends on the true network effect. So it's kind of circular. Um, you can estimate it, though, by weighting it by the relative degree, degree of your neighbor and the distance between an adversary and his neighbor's average out neighborhood's average outcome. Um, basically, this uh, influence metric we looked at earlier, um, weighting the difference between an adversary's outcome and the mean outcome of his two-hop neighborhood. Uh, so we looked at some experiments. Uh, this is just for SBMs, but we also looked at um, uh, small world networks and uh, scale-free networks, which I can talk about offline. Uh, basically, this shows that uh, as we increase the peer effect, the bias goes way up, especially for the dominating case, um, compared to increasing treatment effect across the network. Um, you increase, uh, the, the, it stays relatively the same. Um, we also showed that as you increase the number of adversaries in the network, uh, the network of uh, the, the bias goes up, which makes sense. Um, uh, so in summary, we derived expressions for the bias induced by adversary behavior. We also empirically dis demonstrated a vulnerability in network AB testing to uh, manipulation of AT estimates from exploitation of peer effects. We showed that uh, if there's strong peer effect in the network, then there's a serious problem uh, if you have adversaries that are trying to exploit that. And we also looked at the difference between randomly placing these adversaries and targeting them specifically. Um, that's all I have. Thanks.